Let me go straight to Sunil Prabhu and get details of Priyanka Gandhi Wadra's electoral debut. Uh, is it nostalgia or pragmatism on part of Congress party, Sunil, uh, that they have decided to field Priyanka Gandhi Wadra from Raibareli? Well, it was expected after, uh, you know, Sonia Gandhi decided to uh, uh, shift to the Rajya Sabha from uh, Rajasthan. It was in that backdrop that the Congress party uh, had to uh, find somebody who will be able to have winability in Rai Bareilly. And it's in that backdrop uh, that uh, Priyanka Gandhi Vadra fits that bill. Uh, as uh, we've been pointing out through the day, uh, she's uh, somebody who's looked after not only Rai Bareilly and Amethi, has been working uh, with those people across uh, that region uh, for a long time. Uh, and uh, this dates back uh, immediately after her father's uh, uh, assassination and uh, helping her mother uh, during the early days when she was Congress president and didn't have time uh, to really look after the constituency. And then for Rahul Gandhi when he was an MAT. So they have a long history of relationship with that entire region. But of course, that, as you rightly pointed out, has seen a sea change in recent times with the BJP in power. Uh, but we'll have to wait and watch and see uh, whether their magic still continues in Rai Bareilly as well as in Amethi. Uh, and and Rahul Gandhi, uh, he'll not, because uh, Smriti Rani had dared that Congress should field Rahul Gandhi only from one constituency, that is Amethi, where she defeated him in 2019. Is he likely to contest from both the constituencies, Vainad, which he currently represents, and also Amethi? What we are told is definitely in both constituencies. And uh, we must also remember that Smriti Rani also lost to Rahul Gandhi in 2014. In 2019, yes, uh, yeah, she upset him. Uh, this is elections and this is electoral politics. So uh, we'll uh, wait to watch and see how yes. things have played out. And it is uh, definitely uh, something uh, uh, that uh, Rahul Gandhi, because he was not a member of parliament, uh, stayed away uh, to uh, make his point clear. But of course, the team of managers have been there. Unlike Smriti Irani, he hasn't bought a house in Amethi, but they do have a guest house uh, because they have uh, his father has been working there. And it dates back from the 80s. So it's a, it's a long association that the uh, Gandhis have with the Amethi. Uh, and we'll have to wait and see how it plays out, uh, whether Rahul Gandhi uh, will be able to make a dent uh, this time round in Amethi. All right, Sunil Prabhu, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Uh, the race to conclude seat-sharing deals in uh, Tamil Nadu, where the political landscape is dominated by the ruling DMK and opposition AIA DMK is picking up pace. Chief Minister MK Stalin's DMK is working on an accord with the Congress. Remember, in 2019, the Congress won eight of nine seats it contested and talks with smaller allies like the VCK are also pending. Meanwhile, on the other side, the AIA DMK and the BJP are each counting on S. Ramadas's PMK as they try to cobble together an alliance. The PMK was part of the BJP-led NDA in the 2019 polls and was given seven seats from the AIA DMK share. The smaller party, however, lost in all seven constituencies. Now to Maharashtra, where Home Minister Amit Shah is in fact leading the seat-sharing talks with allies. The deal is almost finalized, waiting to be announced. What sources are saying is that the BJP is likely to field candidates on 29 uh, to 30 seats. Uh, um, remember, Maharashtra sends 48 MPs to the Lok Sabha. Uh, Chief Minister Eknath Shinde led uh, Shiv Sena as speculated to get somewhere between 13 to 12 seats, while Ajit Pawar faction of NCP will get around six seats. We have Sam Daniel joining us live from uh, Chennai. We also have uh, Radhika live from Mumbai. Beginning with you, Radhika, where is Mr. Shah today? You know, as far as uh, NDA meetings go, it was a two-day meeting by Amit Shah. La late last night is when Amit Shah met uh, a Chief Minister as well as Deputy CMs of Maharashtra. In fact, it, it went on for a couple of hours, after which, of course, no consensus uh, as such was formed. You know, for a fact that BJP is vying for 30 seats. It wants its lion's share of seats. Whereas, as far as Sena is concerned, we're talking about uh, 22 seats that it is demanding. But BJP is trying to work out a formula uh, whereby BJP can have the maximum number of seats and perhaps some of the Sena candidates can uh, sort of fight in a BJP symbol. That's the formula that's being worked out. But Sena and BJP negotiating very hard. Um, Amit Shah had a set of meetings this morning as well. But no consensus. The uh, a message that Amit Shah gave to all the uh, party leaders is that uh, we should... Uh, 
fight and win 45 seats and it is up to the uh, top leaders of Maharashtra to bring in a consensus of sorts. So as of now, uh, there hasn't been any breakthrough, but perhaps Sena would relent and, and be willing uh, to sort of give in more seats to the BJP in a couple of days. That will be clear. Uh, as far as MVA is concerned, uh, lots of contention there as well and multiple meetings happening in that respect. So how soon do you think it will be announced? Is there a timeline of sorts on which both Mahayuti and Mahavikas Agadi are working on? You know, as far as timeline is concerned, every time we ask this question to the top leaders within MBA or the NDA, they say just wait for a couple of days more. Now, today there was an MBA meeting. Uh, you know, some of us, uh, uh, in fact, expected some sort of uh, concrete uh, seat sharing numbers to come in by this evening. However, when we spoke to Prakash Ambedkar of VBA, which is again contentious, he's trying for more seats, but there is no breakthrough there either. He says that, that uh, MBA is not ready internally. There, uh, there are there's infighting there as well. Um, uh, several uh, seats are contentious. Therefore, we'll have to wait for a few more days. More multiple meetings set to take place within uh, Maha UP. Uh, and uh, within MVA, and it may take a few more days, but no confirmation as to when uh, the uh, you know official announcement from both sides. All right, uh, Sam, come in now. Explain to us and our viewers what's happening in Tamil Nadu. How soon are the alliances going to be firmed up? Maria, the ruling DMK has finalized seat sharing with uh, four smaller parties. CPI, CPM has been given, have been given two seats each. Uh, IUML and KDMK have been offered one seat each, technically following the 2019 formula. But the glitch is between the DMK and its major ally, the Congress. In 2019, the Congress got nine seats in Tamil Nadu, one in Puducherry, ten, of which it lost one seat so they have nine MPs together but now DMK sources say is offering two seats less that means seven in Tamil Nadu one in Puducherry and that's not acceptable for the Congress because they technically stand to lose two seats they want at least the status quo nine plus one to continue tomorrow one team might come and there could be some breakthrough but that's the glitch there could also be shuffling of seats because the dmk believes the congress has not grown has not strengthened in the state and ultimately the dmk cadre would have to work to ensure they win the dmk is very keen that this time they win all the 40 seats together in Tamil Nadu and Puducherry. In terms of Kamal Hassan's MNM, he wants two seats. The party is offering one. Tomorrow he'll be holding a meeting with his council and take a, will take a call on that. VCK, okay. which was offered two, one, two last time, is asking three seats. And MDMK, which was offered two seats, is demanding the same, but the DMK is willing to offer only one. In the AIA DMK, they are talk, holding talks with DMDK, late actor Vijay Gant's party, and also Ram Das is PMK. And the meetings are underway. They are yet to settle on the numbers. Okay. The DMDK is demanding 14, although last time it was given only 7. Lastly, the BGP is still grappling with uh, without any new allies, any new major allies after the exit of AIA DMK. It is also trying to woo the DMDK and PMK who have considerable presence in the northern part of Tamil Nadu. But at the moment they have not been successful. They have only two small parties like uh, G.K. Vasan's uh, TMC and uh, actor Sarat Kumar's AISMK both may not be able to considerably uh, contribute for any significant uh, okay. uh, numbers of votes for the BJP. So at the moment, they are in the lurch, but they hope that Anamalai's Padayatra and uh, Modi's magic could help them to expand their footprint in the state. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Sam and Radhika for getting us all the details of what's happening in Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu.